What, what would you say you do here? Well, look, I already told you. I deal with the goddamn customers so the engineers don't have to. I have people skills. I am good at dealing with people. Can't you understand it? What the hell is wrong with you people? Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and it feels like it's never ending. Uh, it sounds like the rumor is that there's going to be a third wave, a third round of DC Comics firings that are going to coincide with some more Warner Media firings. Felt like after the second round, they probably had gone to the bone. They, they laid off, or they've gotten rid of a ton of executives. Feels like in the first wave, they kind of. Uh, wiped out a lot of the editorial services and things like that but apparently there's a little bit more meat on the bone to to get rid of and here to talk with me about that is el percherito himself the the poobah comics my partner in crime are we in a bromance uh yeah why not yeah that we we need to make it more awkward for the people in the comments they, they yeah. love it when we do that so yes for sure bromance is my bromantic partner Perch, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, and uh, it's always fun to talk about firings. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm I, joking. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just I'm confused. It feels like there's been a lot of, of movement over, obviously at Warner Media. They've restructured everything because of the not so well um, received rollout of HBO Max. They started restructuring everything. We knew DC Comics was going to be. Shrinking the line, we knew that beforehand. We knew they were going to be investing less in creators as far as the big name creators bringing in more uh, you know, green talent, essentially. We see all that kind of play out. But where is there left for them to take take anything out? What What's left? And we do know they're hiring new executives, so it's not like they needed to get rid of all those executives. I think they just want some new blood. Yeah. I, I think there's some of that. I mean, it's the the happy way that the corporations like to talk about this is by saying, you know, we're optimizing our business line because we've got all these different units and they're coming together and there's overlap of jobs. Nobody loves overlap. Let's uh, let's just, you know, trim. There's inefficiencies. Efficiency. Who doesn't love efficiency? Well, people who are getting fired don't love efficiencies. And, and um, usually AT&T has three waves to four waves of these things. Uh, if you look at when they swallowed direct TV or other business units, they tend to, you know, they, they take out one line of management, they take out a director line, they take out a management line. So I think we're at the manager line at this point. We're talking about a lot of lack of renewals of some contracts for some people who are on contract. And, and, uh, I, I don't think, well, we'll, we'll get to it in a minute, but people, uh, the thing that, that is confusing me about all this is people should be subscribing to your channel. Well, I agree with you, man. I, we could, we're both about to hit 10K, you know, here at the beginning of uh, 2021, maybe at the end of 2021. We'll see how it goes. But people absolutely should be subscribing if they want all the best comic book news, reviews, and analysis. And, of course, along with your channel. Yeah, well, get to this one first. Let's get Wes over 10K. He's really close at this point. So jump on in there. But, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, with this whole story, first off, it's hard to tell if – this is a case where, uh, you know, is, is this is this a, a true story? Is this uh, basically, you know, is this Rich Johnson talking to Andy Curry or somebody like Andy Curry or maybe Andy Curry under a different screen name? And he's still relaying some information, obviously, into his tenure about a month ago at D.C. Um, undoubtedly, there's going to be some trimming and cuts. My feeling is it's not going to be as severe. It's not going to be bloodbath number three. I think bloodbath three you know, gets clicks and headlines. I think this will be a, a quieter one because to your point, they've already cut a lot of meat off the bone. There there just isn't a lot left at this point. Yeah, you know, they, I know in the last round, you lost like well over 100 years of, of comic book uh, knowledge, but they are looking to add new executives. What can you tell me about, you know, what is all that? Are they just replacing some of the people that they lost or are they thinking about comic books in a different light. Maybe they, they have new strategies, or they need new people, or they, they're going to have new branches or offices. Well, I definitely think they're going to have, they are, they are yeah, like to, to your point, they've got some open positions that they've been advertising for, uh, primarily around new media and digital, primarily around uh, how to take some of these properties and take them other places. And that's, it's, it's, in, it's entirely clear. I mean, it's not even something we have to guess at. They've said it directly. Their goal is to take these comics and put them more places. And part of what I think they've recognized is that there are not, uh, they don't have the people in house who know how to make a digital strategy. And they are correct. Like that is not a, 
that is not some corporate bigwig who's out of touch with the industry. The, they, well they, documented they, right here on my channel and on yours. Yes, they they clearly DC doesn't know how to do this. So they do need to hire in some people uh, who who can do it. And uh, it it you know they they probably are looking at some people who have tried and failed. And you know there's a lot of people in the media department, the new media and the marketing departments at DC, who are you know just not. Yeah, they, they have been performing like they've been performing. And it's it's the old dogs can't teach old dogs new tricks. Uh, the other factor is you do have Daniel Cherry in. He is an executive there and he is going to want to bring in his team and he's going to have a people kind of loyal to him that are going to execute on what he likes as opposed to going in and uh, and having to work within the system. I, I think he that's that's not why they hired him. That's not what executives tend to do. And I think this third wave is going to be at least some of that of, of him aligning his team to what he wants. So he's had some feeling out. He's, he's had his uh, introduction to the team. He's seen who's bought into the strategy, who's been able to execute his vision and what he wants to do. And it's time to trim some of the fat and, and get some churn. Yeah. And I think that's that's probably what we're going to be seeing here at the beginning part of the year. I, again, I don't think it's going to be severe. I think it's going to be some realignment. I think it's definitely going to be some people that are going to be more of what uh, Cherry wants in his team. And every time we do, you know, we talk about this, we commentate on it, do some analysis of it. Uh, people will say, oh, you, you're talking about this not being a big deal, or you're talking about this being, uh, you know, for the better. There, there's no guarantee this will make a better company at the end. So if you're hearing that, if you're hearing that in my comments, don't don't hear that, because it's it's just as likely, in fact, some might argue even more likely, that a bunch of new people come in and they're they're just a different kind of bozo and the marketing gets no better the digital strategy does not improve and you know we just continue this cycle uh you know it's so it it's gonna be interesting to see what happens like i said i think a little bit of exaggerated i think uh, rich wants to sell his clicks and i think some of the people who are feeding his information have a agenda to make the company look as incompetent and screwed up as possible and keep in mind a lot of what we're hearing creeping out of the company is from people who were fired who might just have a little bit of a little bit of disgruntled uh, nature to them. Axe to grind. Uh, it definitely an axe to grind. And and so that's, that's I think, what the nature of kind of a lot of what we're hearing. But, you know, at the same time, it's it's they're going to lose more talent, and that's not a good thing. Well, it isn't a good thing. We've already started to see some of the uh, drop in as far as the production. I'm not even talking about the writing quality or, or choosing the art talent. I'm talking just production. We're, we're talking the margin line being left in printed – you know, trades, you know, the lowest lane trade. There was also a, a couple of single issues that came out recently. I think there was one of the Tales from the Dark Multiverse that had that in there. There was colors, entire colors missing on pages, you know, of, of scenes. And, you know, so yeah. we're seeing we're seeing issues as far as the production because you're, you're moving people, we're moving people that have had a long time working on things. They have their own process. You're bringing new people in, probably taking people that weren't working in that asking them to fill in uh, or maybe even take on new responsibilities. And it hasn't worked out so well as far as the product that people are getting, at least physically. Do you see more of this? I mean, I do. It's, it's oh, got to yeah. happen, right? Yeah, I think we're going to get some major mistakes because if you just think about comics being made kind of three months ago and then finally getting into our hands, we haven't yet even hit this kind of exhaustion with, a, like you know, second we, yeah, the second wave of, of, of and, and, you know, people are tired of being stuck in their home, the pandemic, the lockdowns, it's definitely hit California very hard. You have a sense of desperation come in. The holidays are, are often a weird time for some people. And so you have, you have the second wave of firings. We haven't felt that impact yet. You've got the second wave of the virus and what's happened in California, which is going to take its toll on people mentally. And then, you, you know, you just have this exhaustion of living in fear that you're going to be next in this company that's making big changes outside of your control that doesn't lead to the best work coming out from people. And, and so I, I think, you know, the sad part is I, I suspect future states going to have some some super terrible production problems that are going to hit that are just going to, you know, add add problems to misery where that's concerned. Yeah, maybe like the wrong cover, stupid stuff like that that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it happens every once in a while. Now, you know, we've talked about Jim Lee here on the channel. I'm not particularly impressed with his job performance. I thought, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, it felt like uh, he was implementing some changes. We, we got uh, new distribution things, things like that. But at this point, like, why are they holding on to him? It feels like they're, they've let some, some let go of some people like a Bobby Chase that, that really had some value add. Where does the value add in Jim Lee? I'm just not seeing it anymore. 
Well, I, I mean, absolutely. I think Bobby was a was a terrible loss for that company in, in terms of somebody who had a lot of knowledge about how to get things done and be efficient in doing it. Um, Jim Lee is a good figurehead. He's their Stan Lee to, to a large extent. That's kind of the position they want him to play. They want him to kind of show up and be that ambassador. The weird thing is that's not really Jim Lee's personality. So, I mean, they're, they're kind of asking a guy who's not not that. I mean, you know, you, you might argue that a, like a Scott Snyder who is not of the same, you know, not not known as much as Jim Lee by any stretch of the imagination, but still he is somebody who who does seem like he actually enjoys going out and making these comments and doing these things. And and the company has several. I, I think Sean Murphy does is is somebody who enjoys it. Tom Kling clearly does not. Uh, but as much as we've we've uh, beat up on Bendis, he Bendis does like and go to give interviews and and talk and kind of be this this spokesman. Uh, they have several of these people, but Jim Lee is the person they put in that spot. And he's done very little. I mean, if you just think about the it's amount, like of, a, a round a square peg in a round hole. Like, yeah, it's it's not a good fit for him. So, I mean, he's he's playing this kind of creative officer. They want somebody who has the pedigree of kind of being that. And and so I, I think they keep paying him because all things considered, he's a you know he's he's probably cheap for that role. Uh, even with a what's undoubtedly a very expensive salary, he's 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 kind of their creative guy. They can point to you know legendary artist sold the the most. He was the artist for the comic that sold the most of all time here with yeah, with that was it Marvel. <laughs> right, sure, but now nah, nobody cares about that. But but yeah, that is the the weird situation they've got. But it, the problem is he's just he is always awkward in these situations. He doesn't enjoy it. And I, I, I think he's going to continue to struggle. They need a good spokesman. They don't have yeah, like Dave Video. Whether I, I liked his, his direction and things like that, he was very good about getting out there and talking. Yeah, like it feels like we don't get any of that. No, no, I think uh, oh, I maybe think Daniel you, Cherry would do that. Yeah, well, Daniel Cherry, from all accounts, from you look at his past, he's definitely a a marketing guy that puts things in place, but he's not an evangelist. And this is where I think like I said you have some people. You have a you have a Snyder. You have a Murphy. You have a Bendis. You have a few people who are good evangelists, but they are capped. They they you know they're they're under Jim Lee in the sense of you know that's where the message is going to come from. So they can do little things, but they can't really go all out. So you've got this very strange situation where you do have some talent. I don't think they feel empowered to fully do everything they can do. And, and probably have some questions about the management and what, what they're doing. So, so once again, it's a company that desperately needs a good evangelist rudder, and, and they don't have one. Just think about how important this upcoming time frame that we're entering in for DC Comics is, you know, just in, in the short term. Future State, they have not sold that well. It feels like a clusterfuck. It feels like, a, like I don't know why I'm supposed to be buying it. it they haven't sold it at all. And then uh, Infinite Frontier, Besides being just a lousy name, uh, you know, what's, where does the catch? Why am I supposed to get on there? The only things that, uh, you know, the, the big name out there is James Tynan's Batman. We already had that, you know. Right. <laughs> like, I'm going to buy some titles. I'm going to get Superman. I'm going to get Nightwing. I'm going to get Green Lantern based on the interview you did, you did. But it has nothing to do with what DC has done to promote the product. Yeah, that's the crazy part, right? And I think that that's, that's where at this moment in their life, you know, pick somebody who actually enjoys it, who can wake up every morning and do a five, 10 minute something. I mean, it, you know, you're launching a product. If you were a small startup company, you'd be every single day getting out there trying to get your message out. Uh, DC, and again, they, they do have some people who can do this and it fits to what we started talking about at the beginning of this video. If there are, if, if there is a third wave of layoffs coming, if there is, Kind of more bad news that's happening let's assume for a moment that it's not catastrophic it's just trimming it's some um, realignment it's it's you know it's all this corporate buzz speak not fun but let's assume that's all it is without a good evangelist out there who's really kind of pushing the message of dc it's going to be portrayed as more incompetence more bloodbath more signs the company is failing we can get more videos about how there won't be comics in june or july or whenever it happens to be we're just going to get more of that and it's it's you know, it, it's coming at a time where they're trying to launch a new universe. It's completely and absolutely avoidable. And I, I am tired of hearing uh, people at DC uh, give me comments off the record that things are going okay. I mean, to to, to what you just you know to what you said, I, I give a lot of credit to Jeffrey Thorne for coming on and just saying, "Yeah, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing." I mean, he was very outspoken. That's great. DC should be harnessing and doing a lot more of that. That is what they need. And it shouldn't be people like you and me carrying that water for them. 
Yeah, it's it's just so strange. And like a like like you mentioned, they've they've already they've, there's another leak that says there's going to be another wave of uh of firings at DC Comics. Okay, you've already missed the the boat on that one. How about you know making us <laughs> getting some so the word out there, you know, explaining the, your motivation, letting people know why they can have confidence in DC Comics moving forward. Because I can tell you this, you know, obviously it's not universal, but a large segment of my my viewers, and I'm sure a large segment of your viewers are like what the hell yeah absolutely no it, it's this is an avoidable accident they they absolutely can get out there and get the word out and and it, it, this is you and i have been a broken record on this topic we've done a lot of shows about you know what are you doing why aren't you putting your message out i've had people suggest like hey you you and wes should be paid by dc for marketing <laughs> like what? you're doing more than they are sure yeah i'll take that check any day but seriously where what's going on I can tell you this. I'm I'm not a snob or anything. If you want the the colorist on one of your future state comics to come on here and tell me why it's so great, fine. Bring them on. I'll, I'll talk to them about. I'll talk to anybody about comics. I you know, but the, you know you know is anybody available? You know I've never. I know you you've had some some great interviews lately, but you're having to like go out there and work for those. It's not like they're approaching you, right? No, no, nobody. Yeah, the company doesn't do this. And in many cases, I think it's it's creators who do want to tell their story and they want to get things out there. And I know in a case of some, they they look on to this kind of, you know, disconnect with the fans and the customers with alarm. They want to set the the record straight. I mean, I know that was a big reason why by Jeffrey wanted to come on and do it is like he he saw this this hatchet job article and he wanted to come on at least try and make some things right. And and I think there's a lot of creators who have that motivation and want to do that, but the company is not, you know, harnessing any of this. And I think there is a fear if, you know, if they do too much of it, like Marvel does, that somebody will, from the company will come in and tell them, shut it down. But regardless, you're launching new comics. You've got a very risky two month proposition with future state. These things are always jumping off points. It's not a negative thing to say. That's what convergence was. That's what these things always are, whether Marvel or DC or anything. And you need to get out there and get some good PR. And, and you know, you recognize it enough to put Jim Lee in an evangelist spot. That's his title. That's what you said he was going to do. The problem is you picked a guy who doesn't like to do that job. And it's awkward and uncomfortable for him to do it. You got the introvert to do the extrovert job. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, how are you going to fix this problem? Are you, are you yeah. better do it quick? It, it really is. It's, it's bad news after bad news after bad news. There's probably a good way to spin this or a way to get your message out there. But. Yeah. Hey, guess what? There's a third wave of firings, you know, imminent. That's what people know right now. That's right. And coming right at the time of like, and, and the way this is going to go is to say, hey, uh, you know, we've got our brand new comic launch, but it clearly isn't hitting with customers or readers because look, they're having to do a third wave of firings. And the reality is these things are are, are absolutely disconnected because, you know, the, the comics were produced a while ago. The firings are coming. They're not in the same universe, but People will tie those things together and they'll run crazy with it. And it would just, it would take very minimal effort for somebody at DC to step in and set the record straight. Just need to do it. Yeah, it, it's crazy. So, hey, you know, my heart, my heart goes off to all the people at DC. Even if I think you, you're not doing a good job, I don't want everybody, to get, I don't want people to get fired. I would, you know, I hope you get another chance and, and you get to, you know, a, a, a do a better job moving forward and, and things at DC improve. But you know, obviously, there are going to be firings. I, I hope everyone lands on their feet and their families are okay. Um, but yeah. apparently, that that's the rumor. I guess it's going to be happening. DC needs to to, to close up whatever it is their, their leak that they still have out there, and they and they need to start getting a better um, better grasp on their message moving forward because it's atrocious right now. Absolutely, can't agree more. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews, and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.